Now as we move on to Sunday, July 23rd, again, of course, the North Node in Aries, retrograde squaring Pluto in Capricorn, retrograde. Then there is Chiron, which begins its retrograde transit in Aries, as well as Mercury in Leo, forming a square with Uranus, the primordial sky god, the planet of revolution, rebellion, innovation, independence, and the unexpected in Taurus. So some big shifting and stressful alignments occurring today on Sunday, July 23rd. First, let's begin with Chiron in its retrograde transit. Chiron is moving back to 15 degrees. It's going to move from 19 to 15. The retrograde will end on December 26th of this year. Chiron moved into its retrograde shadow on March 29th of this year. It will move out of its retrograde shadow on April 17th of next year. So you see how long, Ingrid, these transits occur. These retrograde transits occur. This was kind of like when we were talking about Pluto and Neptune the last few weeks when they turned retrograde. It's like they just move back a few degrees and move forward. And so we're really getting like a thorough understanding of our wounding, our yeah. insecurities. I mean, that's I mean, all of this um, authority, Saturn responsibility energy it's like we can't actually take responsibility for ourselves if we're not reflecting on how we got here how we've been wounded in the past how do we heal from it that's allowing us to move forward we're taking responsibility for our past so we can do something different in the future and heal ourselves mm -hmm. yes yes and so think back like where were you the end of march april may june to now you're going to be in those places again mm -hmm. as we move forward from now to the end of December. But it's a lesson. Like, it, I think some We're people can get really that. irritated by like mm -hmm. a revisiting, but it's like, mm -hmm. well, you didn't learn the lesson. You have to actually reflect on what had happened before, or you're not actually going to be able to move forward. You have to learn from your past. So if you get annoyed and you're like, why is this happening? It's like, that's kind of like a, a trigger to be like, oh, it's happening again because I need to pay attention to it. And I obviously have something to learn from this. Otherwise, it's just all for nothing. I like to think that like when you're first learning the lesson, it might be hard. Yeah. And then as you learn it again and again and again, it softens. Mm -hmm. And so maybe whatever you were experiencing from the end of March to now mm -hmm. that was hard. Mm -hmm will be a little softer when you experience it again between now and the end of December. Like and then that. it will be even softer when it transits back over these same points again from the end of December to the middle of April next year. So that's like the three layers. Like maybe it was hardest from the end of March to now it's a little softer from now until the end of December. And then it's even softer from the end of December to mid April next year. But it all depends on what planets Chiron is aligning with in your chart. So again, if you are unsure about where Chiron is transiting in your chart, what planets it's aligning to in your chart, what that means, contact me for a reading at theweeklytransit.com. Now, this other alignment here of Mercury in Leo squaring Uranus in Taurus. This feels like temper tantrum energy to me. Uh -oh. It's like the king wants to buy something and the, the king's bookkeeper is saying we don't have the money. <laughs> I mean, you can just be annoyed at your, I mean, you can really be your own bookkeeper. You're just like, yeah. I can't have what I want yet. And that fucking sucks. Exactly. I'm frustrated. Exactly. But also using that energy of like the frustration being like, oh, 
I can get what I want if I put in the energy. It's just sometimes it's annoying. I'm not going to lie. It is fucking irritating when you're just like, can I be there already? I don't want to put in the work. I just want to get there. (laughs) Sometimes, yeah, it's, it's like the frustration is necessary because it's motivating you to get out of that discomfort. So is there anything that your heart desires that your reality is saying you can't have that? If that's the case, then think differently, act differently than before, move forward from your heart, but connect your heart to to your innovative mind. Like, what is different about you in the way that you think, in the things that you desire in the material realm? What is different about you? Appreciating yourself. Yes. How can you appreciate yourself in that way? Does that wrap up the week? It does. Yes. Um, I have two questions here. Okay. Um, Callie Love 5, she says, if you have a negative aspect, is it possible to try to overcome it? Or is it just destined for you regardless of how hard you try to change it? Okay. If you have a negative aspect, is it possible to try to overcome it? Or is it just destined regardless of how hard you try to change it? It's not about changing anything except for your attitude. Mm. If you change your attitude and don't think of it as a negative aspect, think of it as a challenge. Think of it as, yes, it's uncomfortable, but this discomfort is going to elevate me to a higher level. It's going to help motivate the, the, the negative aspects in your chart are what get you out of bed in the morning. And you need to get out of bed in the morning in order to accomplish anything in life. I mean, just like the, the gym type of analogy. It's like, yes, do I like going to the gym? No, I fucking don't. Yeah. I yeah. hate going to physical therapy. It makes me feel violent. Yeah. Do I want to feel better? Do I want to feel stronger? Yes, yes I do. Yes. So it's like I could just obsess that it's negative. I think my friend mm-hmm. was like, stop complaining about it. Because I, I really don't. I personally do not like it. Mm-hmm. If I was going to a dance class, that would be fun. Going to physical therapy is not interesting. I'm always like, oh, I wish I like liked the instructor more. I like mm-hmm. the personal trainer more. They're like, okay, it's not supposed to be fun. You're doing it for a goal that you want to achieve. So you got to get over it. It's going to be uncomfortable and you have to accept that discomfort to get where you want to be. Don't obsess on everything being pleasant. Yes. I was like, fuck. (laughs) These negative, these quote unquote negative aspects that are in your chart are there because these are areas of your life where you need to face the challenge. It's called work. Like we have to work for something, not because it's easy. It's like everything takes work. Mm hmm. And I'm not saying it's not annoying as fuck, but <laughs> I personally believe that you every, each and every individual here is to is individual on earth is here to improve mm-hmm. themselves in life. Yeah. But life can feel like a punishment mm-hmm. if you don't face the challenges. Or also if you don't see the outcome, like what would be the outcome of overcoming this discomfort? What are you getting out of it? Resiliency, I don't know, well, like, like compassion, perspective shift. There's got to be some reframe so you're not just obsessing on the, like, there has, what is the outcome of it? Like the, you know, I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to be more resilient in my body, What you know, whatever the thing is. I mean, so maybe taking way- that North Node class with you might help, like being able to look at, I mean, a lot of the times that dis discomfort comes from your north node energy that you don't yes. enjoy you're like i yes. feel like i have to do this and i can't fucking yes. get it right yes the more you are in your south node the more those negative aspects are adversely affecting you mm-hmm. because they're they want to be harder on you when you're not where you need to be where you're yeah. not directing your energy where you yeah. need to be so um and then I have key. 
They want to know why isn't there currently any major transitions happening for Virgos? Is there anything major on the horizon coming up? There's always major transitions happening for Virgos. It's uh <laughs> maybe we just haven't been talking about it as well. Much the the thing is, is or... there well here's the thing. Okay, so obviously I think maybe this question came before Mars moved into Virgo. So, you know, Mars is transiting through Virgo. So there is a planet in Virgo right now, but for several months through this year, there's no planets transiting through Virgo except for the moon every 28 days. So, but just because we don't say there's a planet transiting through Virgo doesn't mean that there aren't major transits happening for Virgos because anytime there are planets and we're just talking about Virgo, like if you're a Virgo sun, Anytime there's planets transiting through water, earth, or mutable signs, it is making a direct connection aspect to your sun in Virgo. So there's, we talked about earlier at the top of this podcast, the new moon in Gemini, which was over a month ago or about a month ago. The new moon in Gemini, that's a big deal for Virgos because Gemini squares Virgo. So when Mercury transited through Gemini, that square is Virgo. Neptune and Saturn are both transiting through Pisces. That opposes Virgo. So that's a big deal too. The, this trend, yeah. Were you oh, say something? I, oh, and also like wherever your houses are, the house that rules Virgo, like that can be in, like if you know your birth chart more, you're going to be like, oh, well, it's not, maybe it's not technically affecting my son in Virgo, but something's always hitting somewhere something's always hitting somewhere mm -hmm. <laughs> and like exactly. you're not just you're not exactly. just your sun sign which is <laughs> i mean if you're newer to astrology especially it's like we always just go by our sun signs but there's going to be something affecting your chart in some way at all times yes even if you're not even if it's not your son key reach out to me for a reading the or weekly transit.com and i will read your chart and I will read the transits of your chart and I will blow your mind with everything <laughs> that's going on with your chart right now. At all now. times. It, exactly. It's always something happening. You're Nobody's living in a vacuum here. Yeah. And then also it's the basics something. of astrology kind of goes a little bit into the houses and what that means and just kind of how we're, we're all, all of the pieces of the puzzle all the time. So it just, it is affecting different areas of our life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Scott. You're welcome, Ingrid. I will see you next week. See you next week. Thank you for listening to The Weekly Transit. Follow us on Instagram for daily updates about the planetary alignments and how to work with the energy. If this podcast is helping you navigate life more gracefully, please subscribe, rate us five stars, and share with your friends. If you're ready to go deeper, book a personal reading with Scott or sign up for his new moon full moon class at theweeklytransit.com. Transit, 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 transit.